Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a black green deck titled Skeletal Sword, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a Vorpal Sword, a one mana rare artifact equipment that equips for double black, giving the equipped creature plus two plus zero and death touch, and for eight mana until end of turn, Vorpal Sword gains whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. So Vorpal Sword can be this powerful alternate win condition, which can help us win the game out of nowhere. So which creature are we going to try to equip with Vorpal Sword? There's a few different options. We could go with a flying creature, that's more difficult to block so we can easily connect with the opponent to win the game. We could maybe combine First Strike or Double Strike with Death Touch, which is a neat combo. Or we could go with Trample, because Trample plus Death Touch means we only need to assign one damage to each creature blocking or trampling Death Touching creature, and the rest can trample over to the opponent, so we can also easily win the game with the alternate win condition, and makes it almost impossible for the opponent to chum block our creature over and over. And that's where I landed on a Skeletal Swarming as another card in the deck, a 5 mana rare enchantment from Forgotten Realms, saying each skeleton we control has Trample, attacks each combat if able, and gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of other skeletons we control, and at the beginning of our end step we get to make a tapped 1-1 black skeleton creature token, and if a creature died this turn we get to make two of those skeletons instead. So Swarming has a few things going for it. It's a repeatable source of trampling creatures that combines nicely with Vorpal Sword, so if the opponent has a bunch of removal, they won't be able to stop our skeletons forever. Then Skeletal Swarming can also be great in multiples, and we might not even need Vorpal Sword to win the game if we get multiple Skeletal Swarmings down, because not only do we get multiple skeletons that pump each other up, but we also get that plus X plus O bonus multiple times. So at one point during testing, I had two copies of Skeletal Swarming in play, and with a total of six skeletons, skeleton tokens, they all had 11 power since they get plus 10 plus 0, plus 5 from one of them and plus 5 from the other, so that can very quickly get out of hand, and our deck has no shortage of removal, making it easier to get those two skeletons end of turn, even if one of our skeletons doesn't die. And then the other reason to go with Skeletal Swarming is that it puts us in green, and we kind of need to be in green so we can ramp up to have enough mana to use the Vorpal Swords alternate win condition in the first place. Now, the Skeletal Swarming isn't perfect because our skeleton only appears at the end of turn and it enters tapped, so we will have to potentially both equip and activate Vorpal Sword in the same turn, or we need one of our skeleton tokens to survive for a turn before we can equip it and then maybe activate on the following turn. So it is going to cost us a lot of mana, but that's why we have a lot of ramp in the deck as well. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got the full playset of Neverwinter Dryad, single green for a 1-1, that we can sacrifice for 2 mana, to search our library for a basic forest card and put it on the battlefield tapped, so we can potentially chum block with the dryad before sacrificing it to prevent a bit of damage. It's also a great way to trigger our skeletal swarming to make sure we get two skeletons end of turn instead of just one, and sometimes we can also just equip the Neverwinter Dryad in the late game with Vorpal Sword, and it can still win the game despite only being a 1-1. Then we've got two copies of Blood Chief's Thirst as a cheap removal spell, can also be kicked to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers. At two mana we've got two copies of Flunk as a removal spell of choice. This I think overtakes Power Ward Kill, since there's too many dragons and angels worth killing, so Flunk can still potentially take those out at instant speed. And then at three mana, two copies of Soul Shatter, shines especially against Goldspan Dragon, so we don't need to target it to take it out, can also deal with planeswalkers potentially. Then we've got more ramp with Field Trip, letting us search for a basic forest to put on the battlefield tapped, and we also get to learn, so we can grab one of our lessons out of the sideboard. We get a seven card sideboard in Best of One, and that includes Environmental Sciences to find a land, Containment Breach to take out artifacts or enchantments, Introduction to Prophecy for card draw, Introduction to Annihilation can be an expensive removal spell, two copies of Mascot Exhibition, which we can also ramp into generating three different creatures, which we can potentially equip with Vorpal Sword to win the game, and then Confront a Past to take out opposing planeswalkers or to get back our Professor Onyx from the graveyard. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Crippling Fear as our sweeper of choice. We get to choose a creature type, and creatures that aren't of the chosen type get minus 3 minus 3 until end of turn. So if we name a skeleton, we can potentially save our skeleton tokens and still wipe the opponent's board. And then we've got the full playset of Vastwood Surge, which lets us search for two basic land cards. We also want to get Double Swamp, so we have enough black mana to activate Vorpal Sword and potentially equip it in the same turn. Can also be kicked to put plus 1 counters on a team later in the game. 
and then a full playset of Binding the Old Gods as a versatile removal spell that will also ramp us on the second chapter, and giving our creatures Death Touch in the final chapter also combines nicely with the Skeletal Swarming. And then besides our full playset of Skeletal Swarming, we also have three copies of Professor Onyx, which can also help us assemble the various combo pieces. As the plus one lets us take a look at the top three cards of our library, we put one of them into our hand, rest in the graveyard, then the minus three gives us more removal, another way to trigger the Skeletal Swarming, and the minus eight can also be game winning, and then Magecraft also drains the opponent for two, and there's no shortage of instants and sorceries to enable it. And then going over the mana base, we also have two copies of Lair of the Hydra as a nice creature land and mana sink, and then ten of each basic land, and four of the black green pathway, no snarls in this deck. And then you may have noticed this deck is completely legal in the standard 2022 event, as all cards are rotation proof, so we'll be playing it in that event as well today. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Just need a third land and we're off to the races. There could be situations where holding Vorpal Sword so we don't give the opponents the information could be worth it, so we can potentially play, equip, activate all in the same turn. But the mana efficiency could also matter. So we've got a turn to flunk, ready to go, and then hopefully we get to field trip, surge, can maybe get Mascot Exhibition with Field Trip, which will also give us an Evasive Inkling token, which we can equip. Alright. Got to hope for a line next turn. Sun and Spirits. We can give minus one, minus one. So, yeah, that's enough to kill it. Alright, dried a bit late to the party, but I'll take it. So that will eventually get us a land. There's another one. I guess I can attack for one. Force comes into play tapped. So we won't be able to play another Dried. So definitely a slower start than we would have liked. But opponent's not pressuring us, so we might have time to eventually assemble the combo. Maybe holding on to a counter spell. Portable hole can exile my sword, I suppose. Sure, so that's another reason to hold it for later, although now we have a target for binding. Yeah, I'm gonna field trip. If they counter it, they counter it, or do we play dry it instead? Yeah, I guess dry it accomplishes mostly the same. And I really need land 4. Opponent up to 5 mana. We suspect they have at least one counter spell in hand. Alright, I guess fast would surge for now. We saw that one coming. Next we can maybe field trip if they play another Ascendant Spirit, we can thirst it. As your opponent foretells a card, could be another saw it coming. I guess we'll surge again. Alright, our opponent's choosing to counter our ramp cards, which, you know, may or may not work out for them because we'll eventually draw out of it. Test of Talents will get rid of all author copies. So that means no access to Mascot Exhibition. And our opponent got to see our deck. 
So the card we really want to resolve, of course, is Professor Onyx. Although Skeletal Swarming's not bad either. I imagine that baits out another counter. It does not. It's gonna get bounced first. Behold the multiverse. Happy with one card. So we could cast Professor Onyx, but that's most likely not resolving. So I'm gonna replay Swarming. Probably should play land first anyway, in case of a Jory disruption. Can't negate it. And our opponent deliberates. So I'm not sure what the opponent's wing condition is. Maybe some Planeswalker. For now we could Vastwood Surge, or we could run this into another counter spell. So the main issue here is that we're holding a few removal spells that may or may not be useful in the matchup. Although Ascendant Spirit gives us a target. Crippling Fear is not going to work since they can level it up. Get some swamps. This is a situation where having the Hydra creature land would have been very useful as a way to pressure the opponent. They've cast a lot of multiverses. So they're definitely ahead on cards. Desert Doom has Ward 4, which we can still pay for here. And there's Lair of the Hydra. So we're down to a single Crippling Fear. Skeletal Swarming to draw. And I guess we can hit for 3. No Shark Typhoon to worry about. Right, opponent bounces the Swarming again. Gets negated. All right, put on falls to eleven. So it'll need to find an answer for the Hydra. Could try to unlock the Vorpal Swords by using the Binding. Or we can hit the opponent for 10. 10's not 11. If I hit for 6, I can still play Binding second main potentially. Opponent takes it. And yeah, we'll just pass then. At this point, the Vorpal Sword alternate wing condition is probably not going to matter. Okay. Opponent showing all the useless cards they had in hand, I suppose. Double Doom's card, double Portable Hole, but yeah. Lair of the Hydra, like we mentioned during the game. Perfect wing condition against the control deck. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Just need to find a creature eventually once we ramp with double surge. Let's see when with our Vorpal Sword. I guess we'll play turn one Dryad instead. Although we could have kept the Dryad as a creature to eventually equip. But I think I would rather just ramp on turn two if possible and set up a turn three Vastwood Surge. As we see white from our opponents. So I should be able to still block white without them making a zombie. So we can prevent three damage. But another cool new card from Forgotten Realms. So Vastwood Surge gonna get double swamp. So we can Crippling Fear as well. Dream Devourer. Alright, now a juicy Crippling Fear is probably worth it. And got a name Crab. See, if only our opponent was playing Crab Tribal, they would have been safe. Gets pass summoning, so this is probably a deck playing Awaken the Blood Avatar. So for now we're not under too much pressure. Can keep on ramping with Vastwood Surge. And yeah, this might be a game where we can win with the Vorpal Sword. Especially if we find our Skeletal Swarming. So get a couple more Swamps, play the Sword. And then any way to generate a creature would be appreciated. Although a dryad on the ground is probably not going to get past the pass summoning anytime soon. So field trip to get the mascot exhibition would also be great. But I'm going to turn on Den of the Bugbear. We almost missed it in the opponent's mana base. But uh, yeah. It's gonna hit pretty hard. Professor Onyx to the rescue, potentially. So if we plus, she's still gonna fall to an attack, but it can help us find a creature to equip with sword. If I minus, we kill Valky. Don't think that's much better. All right, there's a Skeletal Swarming. Is it better than Field Trip for Mascot Exhibition? So I can still play a land for the turn. Won't have enough mana to Field Trip plus cast the Mascot Exhibition in the same turn. So I think Swarming's gonna be better than. All right, we've got all the pieces. Question is, are we gonna survive long enough to put them together? Den of the Bugbear animated once again. Professor Onyx is going to soak up 6 damage. Another sword. So we can swarm and ramp with Surge. So we can swarm and ramp with surge. And yeah, next turn I might have enough mana to equip my skeleton and activate the sword's ability. If they have cheap removal and can keep up the pressure, we could be dead before we pull off our combo. They will need to keep back at least three blockers if they don't want to die to the activated ability. A 
the lane Reclusive Painter makes a treasure. And Eradicator Valkyrie. Alright. So we'll see if they leave back enough blockers to survive. Flunk. Alright. Well, we might have the combo assembled here. So we'll equip our token attack. And then... I guess I'm one mana short of activating and casting Flunk, but we can always decide not to use the activated ability, just let the opponent lose three of their blockers, and then uh, we get two more skeletons and we'll be on our way. So your opponent does understand this interaction. So, yeah, I have seven, eight, nine mana. This is eight to activate, so not enough to Flunk and activate Vorpal Sword. So we'll just kill all three creatures here, and then uh, take it from there. And then I'm probably going to flunk the Eradicator Valkyrie, but we can do that in the opponent's turn too. Make two more skeletons, sadly won't be able to equip them now. And our opponent needs four blockers to survive the alternate win condition. So that's asking a lot. Awaken the Blood Avatar. Alright, that's going to make us sacrifice a creature. And I'm going to let the opponent attack here. They would have lethal if it weren't for Flunk. We're at two. And the skeleton is gonna cross the finish line. Sadly, our opponent explodes before we get to hit, but yeah, we can equip. Opponent knows what's incoming, activate Vorpal Sword and win the game, even though our opponent's still at 20. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with the fine hands. Don't have any of my combo pieces, but some ramp and interaction, and then we'll figure out how to win the game later. Turn one dry, always a good start. Opponent on a life gain deck. Well, they can gain as much life as they want, but Vorpal Sword could still win the game, even if they're at a thousand life. And a Druid class can also enable the life gain synergies. Gonna ramp so we can Vastwood Surge here. And Professor Onyx, the perfect card to ramp into. Get double swamp for Vorpal Sword. Alrighty, so... Professor Onyx and then just plus for now. Open your books to page. And then I could grab Dried and play it, or I could grab Thirsts for later. I'll grab Thirsts. The decision when playing Professor Onyx was do we keep up green in case of Dried or black in case of Thirst? Had two Thirsts left in the deck versus three Dried, so that's why I went with uh, green. Moon Dancers, definitely worth killing. I need answers, not more problems. Plus first. Field trip's fine. I have impeccable study habits. That works. We can binding the innkeeper if we want, although it doesn't bother me all that much, to be honest. Grab a mascot exhibition. Even though we could get containment breach, and then I think I'm fine just keeping up soul shatter. If they put a bunch of counters on innkeeper, we might kill it. If not, then uh, we can wait. And drist. 3 3 joined by a 4 1. So. Sure.
Liliana takes one. Skeletal Swarming's perfect. So now, let's see, Skeletal Swarming cares about if a creature died. So we'll kill the creature. Make two skeletons. And now we're just a Vorpal Sword away from the win. We did have pretty much the ideal start with an early Planeswalker that we could activate multiple turns. Crippling Fear is pretty good. Can name a skeleton. One sided sweeper. Skeletons are now four powered, and next turn we can kick a Vastwood Surge, which may already be enough to win the game. Although, if we can find a Vorpal Sword, I'll definitely go for that instead. No Vorpal Sword, although another Swarming is pretty great here, as it'll pump the other skeletons in play, and that should be enough for a lethal attack. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's light on interaction, but we can ramp into double swarming, so we'll give it a shot. If our opponent's a very aggressive deck, we're probably going to be in trouble. Turn on Eye Twitch, I don't mind as much. We'll need Vastwood Surge to get our black mana at the moment. Experts can have a land. Alright. So Field Trip gets a forest, and then I could play turn 4 Swarming into turn 5. Hydra comes into play tapped. And then learn for maybe Mascot Exhibition, maybe Environmental Sciences. Let's go with the Mascots. Will give me a play after we deploy double swarming. Mono black not gonna have an easy time answering our enchantment. And yeah, they might just be sitting on a pile of removal, which doesn't interact favorably with our enchantment. Five mana for Turgrid, God of Fright. So we could play Kicked Thirst, which is probably best here. Or I can play another Skeletal Swarming. Another Swarming is tempting, I will say that. Alright, let's attack and see if they block. They don't. Since they didn't block, I probably kick Thirst. If they blocked, then playing another Swarming and making four Skeletons end of turn would have been quite tempting. Now we get to make two more since Turgrid died. Faceless Haven, definitely relevant here. And a Professor Onyx. It's gonna plus. And playing another Swarming here is going to pump up our Skeletons right away. Even though I could play Exhibition, I think that's still going to be our best bet. So all five power now. So sending two of them at Professor Onyx is enough to take her out. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, Skeletal Swarming too strong. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a nice hand. Bit of interaction, some ramp. Double layer of the Hydra to eventually give us a win condition if we don't find another. Opponent red whites, some sort of equipment deck. We've got the Soul Shatter at the ready. A relic axe. That's fine. Could decide to binding the axe. I think I would rather keep it for a creature, and then for now we'll just keep on ramping with Vastwood Surge. Get more swamps since some of our ramp only gets forests. And we might need a lot of black mana to play an equipped Vorpal Sword in the same turn and use the ability. So still missing a big payoff card, although we do have double Lair of the Hydra, which is still a decent mana sink. Brain or Battle Hammer, good target for binding. They can equip one equipment for free each turn. Thirst also works. Yeah, I guess we can wait on binding since that's a bit more versatile, can also destroy equipment potentially. And then I can hit for one, I suppose. Plate armor. That's fine. So I could attack for six here with Hydra. Or I could search first and give me more mana for next turn. And hit for two. And then I'm probably fine getting one force now. And then still keep binding to answer future creatures, since your opponent has two equipment now, but no creatures to equip. So Lair of the Hydra, maybe not the most efficient creature land early on in the game, but once we get to the late game we can potentially hit the opponent for 8 next turn. Or even nine after we play our land. See giant ox. Not a bad blocker. Could still attack past it with a lair. Which is probably the play. So I can animate for nine here. Which is a two turn clock. Opponent takes it. Dueling rapier. Ox now at 3-7. They can equip the plate armor for just one mana. Now they can equip it for free. Alright, this giant ox is becoming quite threatening. 7-11 and a dwarf old champion. Alright, so they have two creatures to equip now. And they could still move the plate armor for free. So what's my move? Could still just animate Hydra for x equals 8, 
which will force a chum block, and the ox isn't threatening to kill me on the way back. Could potentially kill me if they top deck Halvar, a god of battle. But I guess we'll have a Dryad as an extra chum blocker, so we can survive that as well. So yeah, we'll activate Lair for 8. Keeping green mana untapped. Opponent has to chump. And we should be safe on the way back. Another Rapier, so the Ox could technically block my Hydra now without dying. They can't attack, but then we can just Binding the Ox and we'll be fine. Does have Ward 1, so we'll have to pay for it. And then animate Lair for... Five. Hit the point for six, and I don't see them coming back from this. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Pretty land light hand with only two lands and no cheap ramp. We do have everything else we need. So if I just pick up two lands in the next three draws, we're pretty happy. I'll try it. We are playing 26 lands. If I draw my uh, Dryads, that's also fine. Turn one Sentinel. Fast with Surge, not what we were hoping for. Masked Vandal could have been very effective against Skeletal Swarming. We can flunk one of the opponent's creatures. Could take out Sentinel to prevent them from ramping. I think I'd rather keep it to take out a bigger threat. More like a Kazandu Mammoth. The land is good. So we can soul shatter their next big creature. Another mammoth. Alright, we drew a land. Now, interesting interaction here between Crippling Fear and Shapeshifters. Or Changelings, I should say. Because they have all creature types, there's no way to kill them with a Crippling Fear. So, not gonna bother. Went with Double Swamp, so we have more black mana for Vorpal Swords and some of our ramp cards, like the Learn cards and the Dryad can only grab forests. There's Vorpal Sword. So Professor Onyx could mine us and still potentially survive the Sentinel attack. So don't mind that. And then Crippling Fear can maybe clean this up later. And then we've got our two combo pieces, just need more lands, which we can get with Vastwood Surge. So everything is in place. Alright, opponent packs it in, just too far behind, gonna lose to the Professor Onyx anyway. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, with a fine hand, bit of interaction, Skeletal Swarming. Up against a Wizard class. So ideally, find a Vorpal Sword, assuming Skeletal Swarming resolves. So not sure yet what deck our opponent is playing. We're gonna go on a field trip. 
And then I don't think I need to get Contain and Breach for Wizard class since I've already drawn two cards from it. So maybe go for Introduction to Prophecy to find Vorpal Sword. Since we've got all the ramp, do have enough mana to activate it? Another wizard class. That's fine. Sir Point has eight cards in hand, but with wizard class they don't have a maximum hand size. So we'll resolve a skeletal swarming for now. Plundering Barbarian can make a treasure. And this Crippling Fear looking pretty good alongside Skeletal Swarming. Although probably no need to wipe the board just yet. So we can keep on ramping with Vastwood Surge. And then maybe play a tapped Lair of the Hydra. And then once we get more mana, I can Introduction to Prophecy and look for that Vorpal Sword. So if our opponent blocks, we get two Skeletons. If they take it, we only get one, but they would prevent one damage. So blocking probably would have been better there. Unless they're playing around a pump spell. So we now have two skeletons. Let's see if we can keep it up. Goldspan Dragon, that's a creature where we would want Soul Shatter as interaction. Although Flunk could still be enough to take it out in combination with Crippling Fear. Opponent is playing Kazul's Fury, so that could indicate a bunch of pump spells that are trying to combo with the uh, gold span. The Rapier doesn't make a treasure token since it's not a spell that's targeting it, but just an ability. Still hits us for 8 total. So that's gonna hurt. Do we see another pump spell, perhaps? Frostbite killing a skeleton. So Flunk is getting better now that the opponent's emptying their hands. And there's Vorpal Swords. Let's do a quick mana count. So I have 8 mana in play, 9 if I play my forests. So not going to have enough mana to play, equip and activate, but we're getting close. Crippling Fear plus Flunk to deal with the gold span. Opponent's going to get another treasure, so they will have enough to potentially play any counter spells that they have in hand. Yeah, let's uh, Crippling Fear. Naming Skeleton. And then we can try and flunk. And then now the question is, do I play Vorpal Sword or do I Introduction to Prophecy? If I Introduction and can find another Swamp, then I'm still going to be short of playing, equipping and activating, since that'll require 6 black mana total. So I might be better off playing the Sword, then if I top deck a Swamp I might have enough to equip and activate. So yeah, Swamp of the Top would potentially do it, assuming no interaction from our opponent. Although the Skeletons are doing a good job of winning the game by themselves. Opponent did have another Frostbite. So they don't seem too concerned about the alternate win condition here, if they're willing to use it right now. Or they might have more instant speed interaction in hand.
three cards. They can still level up Wizard class, although it's not going to do much at the moment. Blue Dragon can shrink down our Skeletons. So that's pretty effective against our alternate win condition, although even a zero-powered Skeleton, once we pump it up with Vorpal Sword, can still win us the game. So Swamp of the Top, just a forest. So we cannot win the game with Vorpal Sword this turn, sadly. Let's see if we can find an answer for the Dragon. Binding will do. And then probably no need to keep the Black Source on top. Although maybe I do. That way I can equip and activate on a fresh skeleton if needed. Take out a dragon. So we'll get two more skeletons end of turn. And yeah, hopefully we can achieve the alternate win next turn. also rely on the Lair of the Hydra as maybe a creature to wear the Vorpal Sword. And then of course we'll take our draw step before the second chapter of the Saga trigger, so we will still draw the pathway. Put on levels up Wizard class. Now unfortunately it is looking like we're also gonna win with damage besides the alternate win condition, which kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. So the correct play would probably be to animate Lair of the Hydra for as much as possible and attack with the team. Although, yeah, if I attack with everyone, they probably kill the biggest skeleton anyway. So, yeah, it's a little unfortunate here. I would have preferred to win with alternate wing condition. I've got 11 mana, so we can activate this for 9. If I had fewer skeletons, then I would have gone for it. Alright, Dragon Turtle can keep Lair tabbed down. But this is still enough for the win. Alright, sweet. So we got to see our Skeletal Swarming deck in action, but as you can see, it's not that easy to win with Vorpal Sword because half the time we're winning some other way, and the opponent doesn't always cooperate. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, a fun ramp strategy that can win without a Vorpal Sword, so you could easily cut it for more interaction, and then just win with the Skeletal Swarming instead. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.